everyone, this is Aya from Hinawi Software. As you can see here, I have opened in front of me the roadmap for the HRMS activities. So I recommend watching this video before you even start with using uh, Hinawi Software desktop application. Basically, uh, in this video, I will cover a specific part of this roadmap, which is the employee training detailed activity form regarding all its different activities and actions. So basically, uh, this is an entire series of different videos where in each video I cover um, a specific action or a specific activity in the HRMS module. We have covered videos regarding the leaves, regarding uh, absences, different types of activities. And also there is a general video regarding this roadmap for the HRMS activities. However, in this video, we are going to go in depth with the employee training detailed activity, what is applicable on it and what is not applicable, uh, what is the workflow, the process of this, how do we use it. So basically, this will benefit everyone interested in using the software, whether you are a user, whether you are an admin, whether a client, a prospective, a person interested to um, purchase the software. All these different kinds of stakeholders and people uh, will benefit from the series of the roadmap in the HRMS activities module. So um, first of all, the most noticeable uh, feature here or the most noticeable uh, point is that it, there are no branches for the employee tra training, not like uh, the leave form, because as you can see here in the leave form for all types, there are specific branches, like it's basically split into all these different branches. However, in the employee training, it's basically just one form. Everything is um, um, recommended and achieved from it, from the form itself. Uh, therefore, it's pretty simple and straightforward. So let's begin with creating an activity. As you can see here, the answer is yes, so it's possible to create an activity. It is possible to also edit this activity. So basically, um, after we have created a form for a specific employee to take a training course outside the city, outside the country, where we specify the maximum number of members attending, uh, the date of the training, when will it start, when will it end, um, all these different um, um, uh, like matter and all these different points which will be covered in the creating activity of the employee training. Next, we can edit this, accommodations, all different aspects can be covered in editing. Uh, there isn't any feature of voiding or cancelling. So basically you cannot void or cancel. Um, and by the way, uh, according to today's date, which is uh, June 19, 2019, this is the most updated so far, most updated features of Hinawi software so far. This doesn't mean that uh, it will not be updated anymore or that uh, these are the fixed um, activities or the fixed actions or the fixed um, permissions uh, for this activity. It only means that uh, it will still keep on getting updated more and more by time. So if you're watching this video after three months, after one year, two years, you will definitely might notice some changes. Um, some of these uh, options will definitely be um, increased. It will be more flexible and more available. So this is not um, fixed since it will definitely be updated. Next, in the deleting, uh, as you can see here, it's possible to delete a, tra a training for employee, training activity for employee, after you have created it. And in the printing as well, it is possible to print the training activity form. So this is also available, printing is available. Print clearance, however, is not. It's not available, it's not applicable on the training form. Designing and printing the training form is not uh, available as well. But as I have said earlier that it might be changed in the future, whether it's a near or a far future. 
Also, in the predefined template for importing or autofilling, notice here the answer is no. Mainly, this is because uh, when you create a new activity form regarding training for specific employees, that specific action is done in the present time. It is not done, uh, for example, imported earlier. It's not uh, autofilled from a specific uh, sheet or a specific form which has been created before. It's basically created in the same moment from the same software. Notice here also the requesting date, the starting date, the ending date. It's also available because at the time of creating a training form, you specify when will this training course begin and when will it end. And it can be within the same month. Like usually training courses um, might start and end in the same month. They might not, they might do. So it depends um, month from month to the year, year from year to. All these things um, are displayed here as no, because usually it doesn't take that long, like years. Training courses do not take year from and year to. It takes like, um, for example, same month or different months. And also, in the days, as you can see here, the answer is yes. However, in hours, the answer is no. This is because training courses uh, can be in days, but it cannot be in hours. The activity which suits this hours feature here is the absence activity, not the training course activity. Also, as you can see here, in the percent of employee salary, the answer is no because taking a training course for a specific employee does not read and does not depend on the employee's percent in the salary. That is not related. Same thing applies to the overtime, whether it's 1.25 or 1.50, this is not available, not applicable. Applying the taxes uh, can be applicable and will be uh, used um, in case the training form, for example, um, is under the additions and deductions. So this is where it's located under additions deductions. From there, you can apply taxes for the training form. But regarding the employee pension and monthly propagen, it is not used for training, unlike the leave form, which uses the monthly propagen. So in the training activity form, monthly provision and um, employee pension is not used. Let's see this memo right here. It says that training summary form is for history information use and there is no payment or no accounting effect. What this means basically is that um, when an employee returns back from a training course, there is a specific window for training summary. So that window is used to enter what has been learned from that training course. It's just like as general data, general information, there isn't any accounting effect and there isn't any payment effects. So that is just a general memo. Notice here that for employee training, there is definitely an approval form. So you cannot um, make that employee proceed forwards with uh, going on a training course unless it has been approved by specific permissions set by the admin uh, through the user access list. However, of course there is approval, but there isn't any editing after approval. This means that once it's approved, it's approved. There isn't any voiding after approval, and there isn't any deleting after approval. And notice here that you can um, approve a group of activities mainly for one employee or a group of employees. So this means that when there are several training uh, forms which needs to be created or approved and several other activities like such as leaves, absence, any other activity which needs to be approved, uh, it can be all approved at the same time. And also you can approve the salary sheet by selected uh, employee names, departments and positions. So this is another point which should be taken into consideration, uh, which states that the uh, system is very flexible. Uh, you can perform different aspects in a very um, transparent way. Now regarding the setup, does the training activity form has a setup? 
Basically, the answer is yes. And this is related to the training payment policy, which is located under the setup names, other important activities setup. So this is where uh, it's located. This is the location of the setup, which is for the training activity form. And also regarding the activity uh, of the training form, does it have an effective date? The answer is no, definitely no since as i have said earlier it's created at the same moment in the present so there isn't any effective date and what is the employee's status at the time of creating a training form for them basically it's active it's always active so this is very important that the employee's status will be active meaning that they can be searched for their names are available they can have salary sheets created for them uh, different activities performed for them so basically this is what the employees status regarding being active means being inactive is the exact opposite they cannot be searched they cannot be uh, created the salary sheets cannot be created and you cannot perform different activities on them they are just set as inactive in the system next as we can see here, regarding the accounting effect, so there isn't any accounting effect for training uh, on this form. So basically, you do not post to accounting the training form. However, you only post the salary sheet. And the salary sheet contains, like, part of it is for training. So part of it will be uh, regarding this training form. And therefore, there isn't any posting for training itself, but there is posting regarding the salary sheet payment. And basically, the credit side of this training is accrued AC. So credit accrued AC is used for the training detailed activity form. And regarding the payment methods, there are several payment methods which we have uh, added and uh, implemented in our system. Basically, they are the cash payment PV, the check payment PV, uh, the bank transfer, but the updating to ledger is not applicable. Only these three. Notice here that in the salary sheet JV, uh, it's uh, displayed and highlighted in orange. This is because it has direct effect on the salary sheet. This field has direct effect on the salary sheet. It says that at the time of payment, the user will decide if the payment is through salary sheet or PV. If they choose that it's, it's through salary sheet, it will instantly be displayed there. However, if it's selected as PV, then any of these three options will be uh, selected instead of the salary sheet. Now regarding the debit side of the training detailed activity form, basically here it's employee training expenses. So this is what the debit side for the training form is it uses the employee training expenses and just like the employee's status in the training activity the employee's salary status is always active so both of them will have the status as active notice here that both hr and timesheet employees can undergo through the training form the training activity meaning that not only a specific type will go through that training both types whether you are an HR employee or a timesheet employee will be capable of going on a training course notice also here that although we have a web module and a mobile module not just the desktop application but there isn't any feature of creating a training um, form in those applications in those modules the web and the mobile However, this is not permanent, as I have said earlier, it's not fixed, it can be implemented in the future, near or far future. So if you're watching this video like uh, in a few months or years, you will definitely be noticing changes, for the better of course. And notice here that we also have a column regarding the salary sheet. There will be an entire video about the salary sheet where I'll, where I'll discuss in details um what is the content of the salary sheet how it's used but in general 
just for now, keep in mind that the salary sheet is the output of all things that has been inserted in the system, everything created earlier, all inputs basically will have a salary sheet and they can undergo through different activities in order to have the HRMS module accomplished successfully and employees have uh, accurate and complete results accurately. And finally, we have this column regarding the memo. It's very, very important and crucial. You should definitely take it into consideration. Uh, there are specific points which you should always be careful about. First of all, we have the effective date. The user must make sure that the date is saved uh, regarding the effective date because it will be linked with many activities. And those activities will read the effective date which you have uh, created and chosen. And you must uh, read all messages carefully before saving. What we mean here are the pop-up messages on the screen. So before saving, you must make sure it's all correct. And always check the employee's status and the salary sheet's status. This is because sometimes employee names might not show in a specific place. And this is usually because of their um, status at the moment. And you must always follow the rules, of course, because it's the customer's responsibility and rules must not be broken. And here, regarding the leaves, always make sure that you return from leave in order to inform the system that a specific employee has returned back uh, before going on another leave. There is an entire video about leaves, of course. Same thing applies to loans. You must make sure that you proceed fully with the process before creating um, another loan. So it's a possibility to create multiple loans, but you have to process them uh, fully. Notice here that if you use a predefined template regarding the additions and deductions, uh, there is always an option to choose whether it's automatic or manual. So in case you choose automatic, there isn't any need to approve uh, for approval before being posted to the salary sheet. Since it's automatic, it will be posted instantly and immediately, not like manual, manual addition deduction. So that is the main difference. Here, we explain to you uh, how the calculation of annual leave is achieved. Basically, the system will read the total due days from the joining date until the start date of the leave, minus the total number of days already taken before and this occurs if the leave's opening balance is not used. So this is the proper way of calculating the annual leave. And in case of opening balance, the system will not take the joining date. It will rather take the next day of the opening balance. So always make sure you understand this as well. And in here, it says that most activities need to be approved before creating the salary sheet. Of course, not all of them, but most of them, the majority. And especially those who, who are, for example, affecting uh, the same month, the current month, those are um, most recommended to be approved as soon as possible. And always keep in mind that you cannot skip a salary sheet for a specific month. You always create salary sheets in order. You cannot skip salary sheets. And always keep in mind that is a possibility to um, approve partially in the salary sheet not approve the entire salary sheet so it's a possibility to approve um, salary sheets based on employee names based on specific departments or positions this is definitely possible and available and always keep in mind that once you start a payroll you cannot change your mind um, later on into a different date because it will start reading based on that date and always remember that anything that needs to be posted to posted to accounting must be posted successfully to accounting and updated and the payment of any hrms employee activity must be paid through the hrms menu itself not from the accounting menu this is the main reason why you like users use an erp system is to make it easier for them into all into the same place. And also keep in mind that payments cannot be split in the salary sheet for the same employee. 
So basically, if there is a different payment method, like two or three different payment methods for the same employee, this is not possible. And here it says that it's recommended to use the stop or release salary sheet for employees who got absent for like a day or two or three, not for those who got absent for leaves for like um, months or weeks. In that case, leave without pay is more recommended. And here it says that the main difference between absconded workers and uh, other types of workers is that an absconded worker is that there are when there are official data that they are outside the country they just ran away and the main difference is that the stop salary is when it's certain that the employee is still in the country but an absconded worker is that when we really don't know where they are located at the moment like the exact location so basically that is the main um points that is the main content of the employee training activity form in Hinawi software along with the memo memo for the entire hrms activities menu make sure you uh, like this video and i hope it was clear and transparent make sure you share it with everyone interested and subscribe to our channel and thank you